Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Students Teach Orgo. Today we're going to be going over imines, enamines, oxymes, and hydrozones. All right, let's begin. All right, so we can convert carbonyls, right, basically double bonded oxygens to a carbon, into imines using a primary amine and acid. So the carbonyls that we can use are aldehydes or ketones exclusively. We can only use a primary amine. So a primary amine is just an amine or nitrogen attached to more uh, to one carbon, right? So it's attached to this one carbon here. That's a primary. So a secondary would be two, and tertiary would be three. So acid just speeds up the reaction. It's not necessary for the reaction to occur, but it does make it occur faster, and we'll see why. But we form this double bonded structure known as an imine. All right, so the fastest way really to, to see what is the reaction of this product is you'd basically line them up. Eliminate the oxygen, connect them, these to the nitrogen, and eliminate the hydrogens until you get zero formal charge. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's go over the mechanism. All right, so we can use the acronym P-A-T-E-D, generally for amine formation mechanism. And you'll see that in this whole unit, we can use this acronym almost everywhere. Acetyl formation, certain reactions, carbic silic acids. This is a very common type of mechanism. Bonification, etc. So we always protonate at first, and we attack. So the PA are the easiest. Protonate, attack. This transfer part, elimination, deprotonation, that's where you kind of get hitched. So we like to say transfer. What we really mean is a deprotonation and a reprotonation. But we like to say transfer just because it saves you a step. So let's continue. So imine formation, right? So the first step is our protonation. So we need to protonate our carbonyl. We need to make our carbonyl carbon susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So this is our carbonyl carbon. It needs to be susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Once it's susceptible, when we protonate, this amine just comes in, attacks the carbonyl carbon, kicks off um, the stellar bond to the hydroxyl, and you form this tetrahedral tetrahedral intermediate. Then we like to say transfer, so the hydroxyl group is going to grab this hydrogen from that mean, and we're going to kick those electrons back to the nitrogen. Now we form water, as always. The step to for elimination is almost always to form water or another stable leaving group, and we kick out the stable leaving group using the lone pair of electrons of the amine itself. Finally, we deprotonate in this, just because the formal charge is not going to be zero otherwise and we get our amine. Hopefully that makes sense. So the most important reaction you're going to be covering really with amines is hydrolyzing them, so other than forming them. So you can hydrolyze them using basically acid in an aqueous solution. So whenever we say acid in aqueous solution, we're almost always assuming that acid exists in water. So we're H plus in H2O. You could write the same thing as writing this, all equivalent ways. Pretty much acid and water, and we get essentially exactly what we started with. Technically, this would be protonated if we're using an acidic solution, but let's just say for the sake of argument, it's not. All right, the mechanism is literally the same. The acronym PATED, essentially just going to be doing it the reverse of synthesizing an imine. So the first step is, once again, protonation. So what do we protonate? We protonate our imine. We get this iminium ion right here. And then the iminium ion gets attacked by a molecule of water. All right, so remember, we kicked out water, and now water attacks. We kick back those electrons, and we get, once again, we reform our tetrahedral intermediate here. And then we do a transfer, once again, to get this sort of a tetrahedral intermediate where we make the amine a good leaving group, and then we essentially use the lone pairs from the hydroxyl to kick out the amine and then deprotonate at the end. All right, so it's basically the re exact reverse of amine formation. So carbonyl to enamine. So what is an enamine? Well, Carbonyls can be converted into enamines using a secondary amine and acid. So if we react a carbonyl with a secondary amine, we get what's known as an enamine. So the most peculiar part of enamines is that they form 
uh, double bonds. And so if we're going to call this the alpha carbon, this carbon right here, we're going to call it alpha. You form this double bond at the alpha carbon. So these uh, chains right here, these two ethyl groups were part of the amine. And this is part of the carbonyl. So let's go see how this reaction works. So we like to once again do it in acid because it's just going to be faster. It's not going to occur as quick if not an acid. Once again, same exact acronym, P-A-T-E-D. But the final deprotonation step is going to be different from the previous mechanism that we've done. So let's take a look as to what we do first. Once again, we protonate. It's first thing, we protonate the carbonyl. All right, make sure you protonate the carbonyl, not the amine. Carbonyl first, right? Because we want to get rid of water ultim ultimately. Then we are going to attack at the nucleophilic carbon. Well, at the electrophilic carbon, right? Kicking that um, double bond back up to OH. Second, we're going to do a transfer once again to form water. We're going to eliminate, and we're going to get this iminium ion once again, right? So this iminium ion is a problem because now we have a formal charge of plus one nitrogen, and there is no way to reduce it by removing hydrogen. Because before we just you would deprotonate the hydrogen, but now we can't. So then we need to get the next available hydrogen, which is going to be the alpha, the hydrogen on the alpha carbon. Okay? And essentially another, it doesn't really matter what the base is here, but if we just say uh, for this problem's sake, it's going to be the original amine that we worked with because we have a lot of it in solution. All right? Let's go over exactly what an oxime is. So carbonyls can be converted into oxymes. We basically use hydroxylamine and an acid. So once again, the acid just makes the reaction go by faster, right? And it's the exact, it's the exact same mechanism. You basically form your imine functional group, and the oxime part is just you're adding an OH to the nitrogen. So you can think of the OH as going along for the ride. So you do the exact same thing, Mechanism exactly the same, but you just have that OH attached instead of a methyl or ethyl or whatever. All right, so carbonyl to hydrozone. So once again, hydrozone, uh, like oxymes, you just have another group attached to the nitrogen that is coming along for the ride. So you start with an aldehyde or ketone, and you use hydrazine, and you get hydrozone. So you get your im imin, sorry, imine right here. It's a hard word to pronounce, I guess. And your NH2 right here. Once again, mechanism is pretty much the same. You just have an NH2 there instead of some sort of uh, methyl ethyl or whatever. All right, let's go through the first practice problem. So predict the products for the following two reactions. Okay. So the reaction on the left, well, you see that this is a secondary amine. And so a secondary amine, you should remember, so secondary amine always is going to form an enemy. All right. It's always going to happen. Remember, we don't need the acid. It just helps it go faster. So I didn't include the acid here. We form an enemy. So you need to remember that originally the enemy would form as a double bond here, right, in the iminium ion. And then the alpha hydrogen Sorry, sorry the, uh, the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, right? So in this case, we could say this is alpha. Fortunately, it's symmetrical. is going to get eliminated. So we got rid of that hydrogen. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense as to why we don't see the double bond here, but rather down here. Next. On this right side, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. We form an imine just because this is a primary amine. Right? There's just one carbon attached to it. All right, let's continue. Predict the products. Don't get tripped up about the, the what to do. Like if you, sometimes some people get confused about whether, okay, do I start with the mechanism or can I do straight to the final product? I think it's important to know the mechanism, but here I think it's best to just analyze the reactants and you can see what your final product is going to be. All right, let's continue. So we know that this is a primary amine, so it's an amine. 
And we know that this is also primary. So it's also an amine. Okay. Pretty much you're just going to replace the carbonyl with a, a, a nitrogen and everything else comes along for the ride. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's continue. Predict the products. All right. So we see that this is a secondary amine. And as a result, it has to form an enemy. So remember, this is your alpha carbon, right? This is going to be your alpha carbon. It's alpha with respect to the carbonyl. But that is where your double bond is going to form. So we can't form a double bond uh, here so because of the benzene ring. So we can't form a double bond here because of the benzene ring. So it has to be here. Okay? And on the right side, once again, so it's alpha carbon, you form the double bond here. And we always form, in this case, my note is saying that we form it on, even though we're forming the less substitute alkene, that is going to be the dominant product. Once again, because of how enamine formation works, right? It's alpha carbon is where you're going to form that double bond. Okay, please predict the product. All right, well, this is just going to be amine formation. I put all these fancy cyclohexane groups just to scare you guys. Essentially, you're just going to form an amine. All right, let's continue. So three different reactions here. Predict the products. So this might look scary, but please just take your time and think about what we've covered previously. All right, let's go over the answers for this. So here we have an amine. We're going to hydrolyze this amine. So we know that... All right, so this was our original amine, and we essentially just removed uh, the carbonyl. So this is what our starting product is. Going down here, once again, it's the similar aspect, except it's an enamine. So remember, the enamine forms from the carbonyl, like the alpha carbon, all right, relative to the carbonyl carbon. That is where we're going to depronate. So it's going to be the one next door, right? The one that's attached to the nitrogen. This is going to be your carbonyl carbon. So you know that this is where you had the double O and you can erase this bond. That's exactly what we get here. And from there, we know that this, you just add an H and this was our amine. All right, so I think decomposing these structures is quite straightforward. You just need to be able to identify what is the carbonyl carbon and where is the alpha carbon. Down here, this one is a little bit trickier because it's an amine, enamine times two. So this first uh, hydrolysis is going to decompose into this group right here. You can think about it like here. Form the double O, we have an H, and we get rid of this double bond. And we basically get this intermediate. And in this intermediate, the exact same thing happens. We're going to form the double O here, right? And then we're bringing back that hydrogen. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's continue. Break the products for the following reactions, please. All right, let's move on to this practice problem answer set. What's the first thing we do? Well, I recommend labeling. Labeling here is going to be extremely important. How do I approach this problem? Well, I know, first of all, you look at your amine and you need to identify, is it a secondary or primary amine? So this is a second amine, right? Secondary amine. Next, you want to attach the nitrogen to the carbonyl carbon. So this is the carbonyl carbon, attach nitrogen, kick off this carbonyl. And then lastly, we need to identify the alpha carbon, and we're going to put the double bond there. That's exactly what we do. So it's not too bad. Once so again, here, this is a secondary amine, so we need to form an N-amine, right? Tack that carbonyl carbon, eliminate the carbonyl. We're going to put a double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. We're going to do the same thing here. So... But this is a primary amine. So primary amine is going to which attack here. And 
eliminate that carbonyl, and we know the double bonds are going to be between carbons 6 and 1. So hopefully this makes sense. So we form enamine. These two are enamines. And this is an imine. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's predict the products once more. Okay, so what do we start with here? Well, this is not something that you may have seen previously. This is a uh, nitro, or I don't know, it's nitro, it's not technically not nitro benzene, but it's like an amine benzene, right? And it's still one carbon though, so it's still considered a primary amine. Even though it's attached to a phenyl group, it's still considered a primary amine. So we form an amine. Nothing tricky there. And what is this? Well, we form a hydrozone. So this is this hydrazine group, and we form a, the hydrozone. And pretty much this group just goes along. This goes along for the ride. You form like this imine type functional group here, and then the rest goes on for the ride. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, practice problem number eight, last practice problem. Can enamines undergo geometrical isomerism? Basically, cis or trans isomerism, right? This is what I mean by uh, geometrical isomerism. If so, which one do you think is more stable? So take a minute, see which uh, molecule is which type of isomer, and let me know what you think. All right, let's go over the answer. So. What we do here first is we need to identify which type of isomer is it. So this is E. How do I know that it's E? Well, draw the lone pairs. Lone pairs are always helpful. Pretend that this is just any other alkene. Pretend that this is a carbon. Ignore what this, this nitrogen is. Completely ignore it. And just look out on each side of the double bond and see which group is larger than which. So this is going to be one. Cyclohexane group is largest. This By largest, we mean larger molecular weight. This is going to be two on the side of the bond. This is going to be two, and this is going to be one. As you can see, the ones are across, so we have E, and here you're going to have just the opposite. If I have one, two, one, two, so they're gonna be on the same side, let's see. So Z is going to be less stable because once again, we have this sort of steric strain that exists right here. This sort of overlap is not going to be favored. Just because here we are, for, yeah, we have the uh, ethyl and the methyl on the same side, but that is much more preferential than having the methyl and the cyclohexane on the same side, just because of that structure. All right, so hopefully you enjoy this video. We'll see you next one.